The Encase M1 sure is beautiful, but without a tempered glass side panel to showcase your components, it does leave something to be desired for PC builders like myself. I mean, for me at least, this would be the perfect case if it shipped with a tempered glass side panel. And I know the Encase M1 is already quite expensive when it comes to a mini ITX computer chassis, but I think an extra $50 or even $100 for a glass side panel would be totally worth it. Back in February when I first started the channel, my first video was in fact how to make one of these glass side panels by yourself. Don't worry about going back to watch that though, as I'm going to show you the updated version today, as well as link the files you'd need down below. So even if you don't have an Encase M1, stick around because you might learn a thing or two or even get a few ideas on how to adapt this design to fit your own case. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so here's the basic idea. The original side panel uses these mounting pins that click into the frame with a tactile motion, and this secures the panel very effectively. So my first design back in February was to basically mimic this and 3D print a side panel, which I could then mount the glass to. Now, this design worked, but the mounting pins were very fragile, and I even mentioned this in the video that some of them had already snapped off completely. This meant that the glass side panel wasn't totally secured and was instead sort of just sitting there on the case. So the redesign had to fix this, and I brainstormed for hours and hours and finally designed something that works perfectly for this case. The first improvement is that the mounting pins are now thicker, so now that when they click into the frame of the M1, they'll exit a lot easier, and there'll be far less a chance of them breaking like in the first design. The next design improvement was aimed at making the whole installation and removal of the side panel an easier process. So here I've added a support for the bottom two brackets that rest on the inside of the frame, and these brackets intentionally have some extra room to move, so they actually act as a hinge for the entire panel, making it a lot easier to install and remove the panel when needed. And lastly, I I removed the rest of the mounting pins on the side panel 3D model and just kept the three at the top to lock the side panel into place. I found that with the original design, I was wrestling with the side panel to get it removed in some places, and this is definitely not something you want to be doing with fragile tempered glass. The 3D printed brackets are still in four sections, as the build plate on my 3D printer isn't big enough to print the entire model, but this wasn't really an issue. I've included the 3D model files down below, or alternatively you can go to my store and purchase a set of these side panel brackets for yourself for just 30 Australian dollars, which works out to be around $25 US. If you do want to print the models yourself though, here are a few tips. Firstly, you need to print the mounting pins very slowly and ideally ramp your 3D printer fans up to 100% when printing these layers. This means that the plastic won't be extruding onto a soft, hot layer and instead it will already be hardened. Here's an example of what that looks like when done incorrectly, where the layers haven't set properly before the next one is printed. And here's what that looks like when it's done properly with strong bonded layers, which represent the original 3D model. Also, regarding the mounting pins, you're going to need to make sure that you're actually printing them at 100% infill. You can see here that despite setting my print settings to 100% infill in Simplify 3D, these mounting pins are hollow, and this means that they're more prone to breaking. So to fix this, make sure your minimum infill distance is set to 0.4 millimeters, which is the length of most extruder nozzles. Another thing you'll definitely need to do is print both bottom brackets with supports enabled, so that the hinge bracket that rests on the frame can print effectively. If this isn't done, it's just not going to print correctly as the layers will be printing on top of air instead of a layer of support plastic. Now, you're probably wondering where I got this tempered glass panel from, and this is going to be completely up to you guys to source. Hunt around your area, contact some local glass shops, and ask them to custom cut one for you. Chances are, if you ring at least three places, one will have the glass that you're after and cut it for you as well. The dimensions that you're going to want are 328mm by 240mm, and the thickness is up to you, but I went with 3mm here as anything more seemed a little too thick. 
This panel just cost me $25 all up, making this a fairly cheap mod. The 3D printed side panel brackets are stuck to the glass via this double sided mounting tape. Look for tape that's either black or clear and is advertised as high strength. Make sure that when you're applying the tape to the glass panel that the panel is clean and that you do very tidy work. This is extremely important because if it's messy, you'll be able to see it from the other side of the glass and it will distract from the rest of your build. The 3D printed brackets need to be fitted very precisely as well to make sure that the panel will mount correctly to the case. So take your time and try your best to get it right the first time. The next part is optional, but seeing as the tape I used is quite wide, I decided to go back and trim the edges with a razor so that more of the glass is visible, essentially creating a larger window. Now the tempered glass panel is completely assembled and it's time to test fit it. Remember the panel first mounts via the hinges on the bottom and then locks into place via the three mounting pins at the top. Now your carefully crafted build is completely visible from the exterior and the reflections on the case look amazing if you're rocking some ambient light in your setup like I am. Also window tint is optional but highly recommended. You can see here that it definitely covers up some of the imperfections left from the DIY nature of this mod. If you decided to do it yourself though, make sure you do your research on how to do it properly. I'm still yet to get a perfect layer of tint without any bubbles or creases, so just a heads up. If you want to do it perfectly though, it's a good idea to get it done by a professional tinting company. Let me know what you guys think of this mod. It's still not perfect, but I believe this is a huge improvement over my first version. This time around, the panel is 100% not going anywhere, and also I'm pretty excited about that hinge mechanism at the bottom. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.